called for a mutual defense pact to stop fascism's spread, but the West refused. In 1939, the Soviets suddenly changed direction and signed a non-aggression pact with Germany. The American party accordingly changed its line. Many felt betrayed by this abrupt policy change and numerous supporters and members fell away from the party. By 1941, Hitler invaded Russia, the United States was attacked, and World War II was in full swing. The U.S. and Russia found themselves allied. Joseph Stalin was declared Man of the Year by Time magazine. But the joyful meeting of Russian and American GIs that signaled the end of the Nazis also signaled the beginning of a new era. Stettin in the Baltic to Trieste in the Adriatic, an iron curtain has descended across the continent. Nineteen forty seven opens a new political era in America. A Republican majority Congress for the first time in fourteen years. Of international significance are the first words of the new House Speaker sounding the year's keynote. There is no room in the government of the United States for any who prefer the communistic system or any other form of absolutism to our American system. Overseas 1947 showed Europe's desperation. Amid this misery, the world became aware that Soviet Russia had found a perfect breeding ground for red terrorism. As the communists capitalize on Europe's agony, President Truman throws down America's challenge. So long as communism threatens the very existence of democracy, the United States must remain strong enough to support those countries of Europe which are threatened with communist control and police state. America's youth lines up for the nation's second peacetime draft. 9,600,000 young men will register during the three weeks period. And all youth reaching 18 will be required to register. We know we live in a critical, highly explosive period. We are aware that we bear arms because of the need for military power to defend against communist aggression. America, wake up. The Cold War is real war. Nikolai Lenin laid down for his followers the plan for world conquest. First, we will take Eastern Europe, Next, the masses of Asia. Then we shall encircle that last bastion of capitalism, the United States of America. Will the United States fall? Yes, this could happen, leaving our people groping in the rubble of their homes and sifting garbage for sustenance. Liberty stems from the heart of every American. But for our servicemen, a threatening invader might strike fiercely and quickly at the very heart of liberty. Liberty, a mighty force heard round the world. So here's to our army, from the newest recruit to the mightiest of the top brass. Here's to them for their selfless devotion to our cause. And here's to them twice over on this Army Day. They always had a boogeyman, and the Russian, now it's the Russian. Before it was, you know, somebody else, but now it's the, definitely the Russians, you know, the communists. They're going to attack us. We're defenseless. We've got to get more submarines, more guns, and so forth. Now the people go into a lull. They start fearing communists in their backyard. Communists going to crop up in their soup. You know, communist infiltration in the school, because that's the program. Give them what they want. They want more battleships. Give them all the money they want. Unfortunately, the people get lulled into this, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they believe it. And like they're going to believe it until the day they get wiped off the face of the eight. You had to prepare a nation to think a certain way, and the direction was a Cold War against Russia. So why is a Cold War against Russia? It has to be communists. So if it's communists, it's domestic too, since they become the spies, right? The mm -hmm. domestic ones become spies. So you had to lay the groundwork. And you did that by smashing the, the progressive unions, smashing everyone, making everyone in a hysterical state of mind so that you can move people in a direction that you want them to go.
I have a list of about 100,000 subversives in this country, which was compiled under my supervision and direction. I shall move to create a bipartisan committee to rid the federal payroll of communists, pinks, socialists, and others who do not believe in the American form of government or in our free enterprise system. New York's annual Loyalty Day Parade is reviewed by General of the Army, Douglas MacArthur. Up windswept Fifth Avenue, the marchers bear the proud flags as they affirm their allegiance to the United States. This is no field day for Moscow or its sympathizers. Hundreds of thousands who cheered the two-hour parade were in complete accord with the loyal spirit of the marchers. In 1950, men throughout the world learned to look on the brutal face of communism. Union Square in New York was the backdrop for these scenes of red violence. From their ranks will come the saboteurs, spies, and subversives should World War III be forced upon America. The potential danger to our national security is great. In effect, there are 25,000 potential foreign agents in the United States. The FBI is doing a magnificent job at the present time in keeping your government constantly alerted and advised as to the plans of the remaining communist conspirators. But the FBI always had followed me, mm -hmm. always went into my office. Is that right? Been during the Mahoma McCarthy period? That's right. Would follow me from the time I'd leave this door, take the subway with me, go to the building. I'd say, all right, fellas, you want to go up on the floor that I'm working at? Say, no, we'll see you later. See, a guy would come across the street and accost you and say, uh, you're a hunter, aren't you, Mr. Hunter? Could I have a word with you? And you'd say, uh, you know, I know right away who it was. So I'd say, no, you can't have a word with me because I'm in New York City and I had enough words with you in Chicago. Now, why the fuck don't you go in and leave me alone? Oh, now, wait a minute, Mr. Hunter. Don't get mad. Now, wait a minute. By this time, a guy comes from the steps, a big husky guy, see? He comes running down and says, what's going on here? Now, there they are, the two of them. What the hell's going on? They're, they're doing one thing to me. All the neighbors are listening, and half of them aren't going to speak to me for the next six months, right? Because they, there I am, a red, and they're the FBI, and they're the heroes, and, you know, a whole. I had to sit down and talk to my children that they were might be um, accosted, that they know that their mother and father never did anything wrong. In fact, whatever we did was to help the community. Flashed a badge at me. He says, Mr. Seagram from the FBI, I wonder if you'd like to talk to us about the communist conspiracy. I just smiled and said, no thanks. I suppose I could have gotten off some good retorts, like I don't know about any conspiracy or anything. Woody Guthrie got off the greatest line. They visited Woody, and he wrote a song about it. The FBI comes and knocks on his door. And Woody says, and I being so foolish, I let him in. They asked, would I fight for my country? I answered the FBI, yay. I will point a gun for my country, but I won't guarantee you which way. I won't guarantee you which way, I won't guarantee you which way. I will point a gun for my country, but I won't guarantee you which way. I said, what do you want? And he says, well, I want to talk to you about your trip to Russia. I said, and I am willing to talk to you about my trip to Russia, but first, there are some other things I'd like to talk to you about. Are you interested in why you white folks are bringing the dope into this community to our young people? You want to talk about that? I am perfectly willing to talk about that. 